Welcome to this very first round table and today we are going to be talking about something that is near and dear to all of our hearts and that is the top 10 truck trends of 2014. To my left is our managing editor Andre Smirnov who does speak English. Hey guys, I actually speak English. <laughs> he does in fact own a heavy duty truck. And to my right is our local expert, Mr. Truck, Ken Sundling. And you can check him out at MrTruck.com. He knows all about trucks. You are all trucks all the time. You are the truckiest <laughs> truckster I know, Ken. Yes, I sleep in my truck. In my truck pajamas. <laughs> the only man I know with truck pajamas. <laughs> Let's talk about some truck wars, specifically Andre mid-sized truck wars. What was the big news out of Chicago? It's heating up. The segment is heating up. The Chicago Frontier Diesel concept came out. Yeah. There so it's basically a Frontier truck the way the the way we have it now, except now uh, they released the um, four-cylinder Cummins turbo diesel. It's a concept now. They're saying they're saying we want to gauge public's reaction to it, but. The reaction we've seen is very positive, and thank you for letting us know on our website as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think what's happening is people want diesel engines because they make sense in trucks, right? They're fuel efficient, they're more powerful, and they're long lasting. Yeah, the price and, is right. And there's also some pressure, right? Because uh, GM with the Canyon and the Colorado trucks, you know, they announced diesel options for 2016 model year. They mm -hmm. said. So I think it's creating some pressure in the segment, and now Nissan is saying, you know, we have an option for you as well, and Toyota hasn't said anything yet for the Tacoma, but what's well, the, and that's just talking about the small ones, you know, that is Mahan, Mahandra, the Indian company makes all these tractors. Yeah, they were going to bring over that crew cab diesel, and everybody got all excited about it, and it never happened. And it never happened. They kept yeah. talking about it, but having it the right size, it's just like in the, the Ram 1500. That thing's like twenty eight hundred and fifty dollars as an option with an eight speed over an Hemi. Well, that'll pay for itself in just a few years, like three years. Mm -hmm. Where you're trying to pay for an 8,000 R Cummins it's, in the Ram or a you know Power yeah. Stroke or a Duramax, it takes you 200,000 miles to pay for it from fuel mileage alone. Plus, you've got two to three times more cost in oil changes. In a smaller segment, when they can make that diesel cheaper, it makes so much more sense. That diesel will actually pay for itself with fuel mileage quicker, maybe three years. So in the market, we've got basically, well, I'll, you, I'll, I'll put this out there and you tell me who's missing. So we've got Tacoma, which owns 60% of that uh, small truck market, right? The Tacoma, the Taco is it. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the Frontier. Uh, and then coming soon, you've got the uh, GM Twins yeah. and the Colorado and the Canyon. So which one's missing? <laughs> which which actor is conspicuous? Or, well, they fourth? have a theory though. They have a theory that their F-150 somehow becomes a Ranger when you want it to. That's what they really think. If you the, order it with two doors or something. Yeah, they they think that, that they can fill that market, and I, that's their their decision. You know, the manufacturers have told me. I've talked to a lot of the engineers. I've talked to a lot of that kind of muckety mucks and they say, especially a Ford, that they don't want to cannibalize their own sales. So what they're saying is people would rather pay for an F-150 uh, than spend the money on a Ranger. And that line is kind of blurry well, between a blurry. midsize and a full size, right? Yeah. That line is not as distinct. So that begs the question, would you want to get like a, a workman version of an F-150 or pay $25,000 for a Ranger? And I think the answer is people will pay for the Ranger because they like the utility of being able to park the thing, right? Exactly. It's not intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. If you're an urban person, you want to be able to throw a mattress in there, throw your bikes in there. And let's face it, a full-size truck is hard to park. It's not the most urban-friendly vehicle out there. Yeah. So that um, uh, segues really nicely into full-size truck for them. Those have been going on forever but they've really heated up nowadays because uh, the most popular vehicle, as I'm sure you know, is the truck in America. The F-150, as Ford likes to say, has been the most popular vehicle <laughs> forever, like 30 some years. Uh, yeah. They build a hell of a lot of them, like 400 some thousand a year. And it's a very profitable segment. And so um, they own that market for the most part. Next in line is Chevy, which has a substantial chunk. And then kind of way below that is Ram with about 19%. Uh, then Toyota with a few percentage 
and then Nissan, which Nissan. is nowhere. Yeah. But they're coming back. Nissan's coming back strong with that Cummins. Uh, Fred Diaz, who used to be at Ram, is now heading up Nissan's truck effort, and that's why I think we're seeing so much focus on trucks. So the question, gentlemen, is what's going to happen with these truck wars? Does it mean um, that consumers are going to have more choice, cheaper trucks, and better trucks? They'll have more truck choices. I don't know if it'll be cheaper. That's always been the problem. They've been going up. It's yeah, the they've never not gone up. And then yeah. sometimes they'll hold the same price. That's happened a few times. No, but I think when competition exists, a consumer always wins, right? Mm -hmm. And I think one of our other trends that we'll talk about is fuel economy, right? And when you have competition, you know, Ram with the light duty diesel, you know, and then the new F 150 with a 2.7 liter turbo EcoBoost V6. Yeah. 2.7 liters, under 3 liters. It's a baby one. So, baby EcoBoost. You know, there's a lot of pressure, and, and the result of a better fuel economy, consumer wins. Yeah, and fuel economy, as you put your finger on it, it's what's driving this. It's all about fuel economy, because when gas went to 4 or 5 bucks a gallon, mm -hmm. people actually not just got scared, truck buyers, but became different buyers, right? All of a sudden, when gas is four or five dollars a, a gallon, you I, bought, I bought my truck during that uh, for very cheap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. When, right. When, yeah. The, when the gas price went up, the truck prices went down. That's true. Yeah. That's like the, the big V8 gas engines that are in the RV industry. There was a moment when they dropped off like a rock, and then all of a sudden there was a big demand. And by that time, Ford was the only one out there with a 6.8, and GM had an 8.1 that they dropped. So I, I think there's no doubt that fuel prices are going to go up <laughs> just the way of the world. So at some point. Uh, I think GM is smart in positioning um, their trucks into the smaller segment because they know that if, if fuel prices go up, people still want trucks, but they're going to want more fuel efficient trucks. Ford's trying to do that with the EcoBoost, obviously, but while it's incredibly powerful and incredibly uh, fun to drive, I'm not sure it's any less thirsty than a V8 when you're really towing because that turbo is actually those two turbos are very thirsty. But it's fun. All right, yeah. Van Wars. Van Wars? What oh, do you say about, about more trucks? Forget the vans. <laughs> vans, who cares about vans? Van Wars, right here, vans. We have a van right there. Uh, okay. You know, but actually, there's a lot more pressure in this segment. Oh, and there's a lot more pressure. Yes. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got, for a long time, there were no vans. Basically, uh, you had Ford with their <laughs> series of vans, and they kind of owned the market. And then you had Mercedes, and at that time, uh, Dodge coming out the Sprinter, which, Sprinter, yeah. yeah. And, and that was it. And then all of a sudden, Ford decided, you know, people in America might want these little vans, which is exactly what they have in Europe. So they yeah. brought in the Transit yeah, Connect. And then uh, Chrysler decided that it didn't have a van to sell anymore, so they took a Fiat Ducato, which mm -hmm. is a European van, and brought it over here, and called it the Promaster. Mm -hmm. uh, Nissan all of a sudden woke up and said, hey, we've designed a really cool van called the NV, and they're all going kind of for that same segment, the the florist, the, the locksmith, uh, and now Chevy has just unveiled their version of the NV, City Express. the City Express. Yeah. 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 So I think they found that there's probably money in that market that uh, uh, small businesses was driving this country, and so all these manufacturers are aimed at uh, at that segment. And I, I'm not sure that rebranding a Nissan is necessarily the best That's way. Chevy. To, yeah, yeah. It feels like that. You know, I always say there's like old Ford and new Ford, old Chevy and new Chevy, and rebranding somebody else's feels like old Chevy. Yeah, it does. That was the thing that you know those mini trucks were all made by somebody else in the old days. That's what they've done. Yeah, and I asked them. I said, why is the City Express better than the NV? And they said, well, because we have a dealer net, dealer distribution network, and we have you know better service. So it's very thin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very thin. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, if you want to establish a brand and you want to establish uh, a, a van that is a, a bow tie van. You can't take a Nissan and rebrand it. It's not a Chevy. It's a well, Nissan. Maybe it's a temporary solution. Let's hope. <laughs> let's hope it's a temporary solution by them, and they'll come back with something. You know, because they've been busy. You well, know, it's they one the of the Corvette and the. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not dissing else, so. a GM, but I'm just saying it's one of those like bean counter decisions where they yeah. see a market opportunity and they took the easy way instead of the 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 right way. I think. Right. Their philosophy's changed a lot since they come out of the bankruptcy, and now they're thinking differently than what we used to see the old GM think. All right, gentlemen, number two, we're back to trucks. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Um, let's talk about the trends that are really driving this industry, and that is higher MPG VL, lighter materials, diesel engines, cylinder deactivation, and turbos. You pick one, go for it. Wow, turbos. turbos. Obviously, Ford, that's uh, their solution. You know, they're, they're not going for the diesel. You know, they're, they're staying out of the diesel the for the light duty. Smaller. Yeah. For the smaller truck, for the light duty trucks, full size. 
Uh, they're going for turbo. Other manufacturers are going for diesels now, mm -hmm. you know, Ram. And um, so let's, let's, Ram let's, is doing let's, let's, so let me go through it. I, I we'll do it. We'll do it one manufacturer at a time. And there's one conspicuous one that's that's not doing anything. So you got Nissan, right, which is now going with the diesel route in both uh, the the midsize and the full size light duty right. trucks. Right. You've got GM, which has introduced a line of engines that. Are cylinder deactivation capable? Right. So when you're not towing or when you're kind of just trucking down the highway, you can turn off the cylinders, get better fuel economy. Uh, you've got Ram, which has introduced, like you said, uh, the diesel uh, three liter, mm -hmm. uh, which with the eight speed transmission. Um, you've got Ford, which is uh, going down the turbo route, saying yeah. turbos are the way to get better fuel economy and yet V8 power. And then you've got Toyota, which is same, done nothing. Toyota has nothing. They, they basically rebuilt the truck and kept the powertrain exactly the same. And I asked them about it, and they, the line they gave me is, this is what we asked our consumers. This is what they wanted. They loved it. And, and let's face it, that iForce is a great engine. That V8 that's in the Tundra, a very good engine, very powerful. Not necessarily any more or less thirsty than the end, but a very reliable, but you ask them, they'll say, this is what our consumers want. And I'm like, you know, that's a marketing line. I'm not sure that's what the consumers want. I think the other line they use is, uh, if, it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the other line. Yes. yes. They like do things 10 years at a time. That's kind of what they do. Yeah. So I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I think that uh, uh, Toyota's going to have to come out with something because you can't have all the other manufacturers coming out with strategies to get more and better fuel efficient trucks. And then Toyota's saying, well, you know, our people want the same old engine. And yeah. I'm surprised they didn't do something with the turbo. It'd be so easy for them. You know, we did, if you guys remember the fuel crisis in the that's 70s. A, the 70s, they all, everybody came out, took their V8s and their V6 and turned them to four banger 2.3s with so, turbos. So that's a real, that's a, that's a really smart question because everybody on our website says, you know, when we did the I Gauntlet, they said you guys have to get the supercharged Tundra, and there is an aftermarket supercharging kit you can put on the Tundra, yes. which is dealer installed. But that's power. That's not mile per gallon. No, no, that's power. But yeah. but you can do it. And then I asked actually Toyota about it. I actually asked. I'm not going to say who I asked, but nevertheless, this person was pretty happy in the company, and they absolutely hate. That option. They hate mm -hmm. the option because Toyota's all about reliability, and that thing and is, it decreases the reliability. It, it increases the reliability. They don't even want to talk about it. They don't. Oh. They, they, they pretend like it even doesn't exist. Right. Well, turbo power is free. It comes off your exhaust. It's there. You can yeah. use it. The supercharger yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. It's a pulley takes yeah, a lot parasitic. Power, power, parasitic. Yes. Yeah. So it's a whole different. Uh, so so which of these do you think will win in the end? I think diesel. If I put my money on something, I'd say diesel. Well, diesel's winning in Europe, and we copy them a lot. You know, just like the transit, all things that come from those RV shows we see in Europe, they come here, and that's that's part of it. I think that's the future. The, you know, the diesels. That's one trade. The truck has advantage. You got commercial buyers, and you got the the consumer buyers, the average Joe, and you know. The, the diesels do well on the commercial side, they last longer, they get better fuel mileage with a trailer, which a lot of them are pulling bigger loads. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, the power is fun, but if they get a, few, uh, a diesel, like with the, the Eco Diesel on Ram, that's cheap enough, and what's going to come out of the Nissan, the consumers are going to go toward diesel. And that brings us right to trend number one, which is diesel the new king of trucks. Is diesel the new king of trucks? And if so, what are the downsides? Well, the downsides is the EPA and all those things going on with it. I mean, there's so much restriction on these guys. You look about all the different particulate filters, you know, all those things they the keep putting on. Yeah, you, have yeah. To, you have to put the DEF into it. All the things it. they're doing to get the fuel mileage, and diesels can be very efficient. So I guess, and in, in the, in the manufacturers are answering the call. It's coming out with more efficient diesels. It's very complicated, very expensive technology that they have to keep using. Yeah, so old diesels had a lot of drawbacks, right? Uh, first of all, they were really dirty. Because they, they weren't clean. And they, that was turbo. Turbo, yeah, turbo clean yeah, them up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, they took forever to start in the cold. Mm -hmm. Different, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, you turn the thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. They weren't necessarily. Uh, well, they always were a little bit more reliable because they're simpler. There's you know, no spark plugs, obviously, in diesel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, heavy duty. They're made heavy duty. But, but the thing is about diesel. Um, I love diesels. I have a diesel passenger car. I have a diesel truck. Um, I, I love the power and the economy, you know, it provides. Um, and it, it's, it's as hungry or as, as not as hungry as you want it to be, right? If you're just cruising down the highway, you know, you can go in the highest gear you know, and just, just kind of cruise. It yeah, has all that torque. And yeah. If you need torque pulling up the mountain, you got it also. Um, but you do have to pay for them up front. 
right? They're more expensive. A little bit more expensive in the, in the beginning, expensive, yeah. and you have to pay for it at maintenance. A lot more changes. expensive. You, yeah, no, you used two, to have a diesel. Yeah, it takes two or three times more expense to just change oil on it, and you know, at least twice as much change fuel filters. Right. So, so you don't get it for free. Get more per hour. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a whole different ballgame. And, and God help you if you got to <laughs> swap out injectors because they oh, get yes. expensive. Injectors, turbos. Yeah. And if you got if you got to replace a turbo, it's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a big thing back when diesels lasted two and three hundred thousand miles, and gas engines lasted eighty thousand. Well, most of your gas engines now will go over two hundred thousand miles. So gas engines have improved. Everything's improved so much. Of course, there's been a cost to it, and fuel mileage is dramatically different than it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. But it's a whole new world. I'm still going to go down to the fact that diesels have the torque and have the lifespan that people want in trucks. So it's definitely coming. But there is a potential downside, and I think that is that diesels are and continue to be dirty, right? Because right now there's a lot of crap that's stuck underneath the truck to clean them out. So you've got. DEF, DEF, right? Right. Which uh, helps trap some of the particles, or you can mm -hmm. burn them off. There's another way where you can actually. Uh, right, the regeneration. Yeah, where yeah. you can regeneration. The particular filter. And all that stuff yeah, uh, saps power because it saps airflow. Yeah, exactly. It builds up back pressure. Yeah, and so, so the first thing that people do, at least here in Colorado, I'm sure that's the case in other places, is they buy a truck and they pull all that stuff off, and all of a sudden you've got. 100 more pound foot of torque and 150 well, more horsepower. Well, the term is parts fell off the truck. Yeah, it I'm just <laughs> fell off, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and, and, and you've got all this black smoke you know, pouring yeah, out the back. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I agree. Now, you know, when back in the 70s, when you see Mercedes going up the hill on the mountains, you'd see all the smoke killing all the mosquitoes. And I noticed <laughs> that the guys who programmed trucks and race trucks and all that, their big thing was overfueling, and then you got all this smoke. Well, I noticed, like, say, Gail Banks and his system of, of aftermarket tuners, he's going toward the cleaner fuel, which I think that's going to be a trend. These guys building up these diesels and these powerhouses are going to start making them so they don't smoke as much. Yeah, Gail, so it gives us a bad image. In the we've, we've talked to Gail, and Gail yeah. will say that if you see black smoke coming out the back end of the losing power. You're losing power. That's unburned fuel, yeah. right? And you're losing power. So, um, yeah, I think the diesel is coming, and I think it's going to be cleaner. But at the same time, you know, we have that long-term Raptor, and I think American V8 and trucks kind of go together like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I think that's going to be a hard trend to change. I yeah. think the sound of a V8, a traditional V8, yeah, V8 that rumble. V8. Yeah, we're different in this country, right? The only country really has full-size trucks. Australia's getting them now, but you go around the world, and full-size trucks are here. Right, and so maybe the lightweight again. is another, uh, you know, fuel economy. You know, Ford is going lighter, lighter weight, and when you yeah. remove weight, you're improving your efficiency. Was that so. 700 pounds they took out of that truck? With that's that's 150, yeah. And, and I think the, the Silverado half tent, isn't that aluminum hood? I mean, there's aluminum parts on a lot of these vehicles now. Yeah. They don't always tell you where they're at. But yeah, uh, and that, uh, that is in large part due to the fact that it's cheaper now to manufacture aluminum, right? It used to be a very expensive metal to manufacture, yeah. so you couldn't afford to put it on a truck and then still have it be affordable for the average truck yeah. buyer. But yeah. now, now they're coming up with more efficient processes in making these kind of somewhat exotic materials. Well, Ford's facing the issue now about the insurance costs. Is it going to go up with aluminum bodies? Yeah, right. Find out. And what about the repair costs? Yeah, the Europeans have had it for years. Well, your Peter belts, your semis, you either go plastic or aluminum. The big Bertha cabs, most of them are aluminum, so they've been using it for decades. And it's different. You don't so, you don't necessarily weld it as much. You tend to glue it, and you tend to, to rivet it. Yeah, rivet it, you, got, yeah. you got different ways of putting it together. But I'm glad to see they still have steel frames. I like the steel frames on these trucks. Right. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. I think we've uh, wasted enough time <laughs> talking about trucks, but I could spend hours talking about trucks. So we'll do right. more uh, truck talk. Thanks for watching, and remember, check out tfltruck.com for all your trucks all the time. As always, this is Andre Kent, MrTruck.com, and Roman saying so long. Ciao.